This video was brought to you by Indently.io. Learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video we're going to be learning about the power of infinite iterators in Python. And at the moment we have three infinite iterators which we can use in iter tools. So from iter tools we're going to import count, cycle, and repeat. And these are the three infinite iterators which we're going to learn about today, starting with count. And it's easier to explain what it does by showing you. So first I'm going to create something called count1, which will be a count object, and that's just going to equal an empty count. Now what this does is create a counter which starts from zero. And to show you how that works, we're just going to type in for i in range five, print the f string of next of count one. So we're grabbing the next value in count five times, which means that when we run this, we're going to end up with these values, zero, one, two, three, and four. And this counter is infinite. We will be able to extract values from it forever, which means we can also just type it in manually. We can say next, or we should print that. We wanna see the results. So print next of count one, duplicate that many times. And no matter how many times we duplicate that, we're going to get the next value back. We're going back to the previous example because for loops are much more convenient. We could pass in 1 million, and we'll be able to extract 1 million values from this, which is quite cool. And there are actually also a few arguments we can pass in to make this more customizable. So what we're going to do next is create count two, which is of type count, and we're going to pass in count with the values of five and two. The first value is the start value. The second value is the step, which means now if we were to replace this with count two, what you're going to notice is that we're going to start at the value of five and it's going to jump two on each iteration or each time we use next. If you want to create a counter that counts downwards, you can do that. So I'm going to create a new variable or a new counter called count three. And here we're going to say that this should start at two and have a step of minus one. And we'll change this to count three so that when we run this, we will start at two and go downwards. And finally, I want to show you that this also works with decimals. So we could say that this starts at 0.0, .0 just to show that this is a decimal and pass in 0.5. And now all we have to do is change this to count four, and you'll see that it's going to count upwards by 0.5. And once again, this is infinite, which means you can grab as many numbers from it as you wish. Anyway, let's move on to the next iterator, cycle. So for this example, I'm going to create a list of type string, and that's going to equal our favorite characters of all time, Bob, James, Joe, and Sandra. Then I'm going to create something called my cycle, which is going to be of type cycle. And what we want to do is cycle these people. Now this one is quite simple. It just goes through the people over and over and over indefinitely, which means we can type in next of people, or actually that should be of my cycle. Once again, we need to print this and we can print that four times and you'll see it's going to go through that cycle, Bob, James, Joe, and Sandra. Now, if we were to copy this, and paste it under, you'll notice that it's going to cycle through them. So Bob, James, Joe, Sandra, Bob, James, Joe, and Sandra, because now we have an infinite iterator of these people. And this one's quite simple. It doesn't have any hidden arguments or anything that we can customize. So if you ever need to cycle something, consider using my cycle. And finally, it's time we move on to the repeat function or the repeat iterator. And this one actually turned out to be my favorite because I learned about a crazy cool optimization that we can use when we use repeat. But first of all, I want to show you how repeat actually works with some silly examples. So in this example, I'm going to create something called infinite and that's going to be of type repeat, which will equal repeat Bob. Now what we can do next is print infinite. And if we were to print that, let's say five times, you'll notice that we're going to get Bob back five times. This is an iterator which will always pass back or return the same value for as many times as we request it. And optionally, we can also give it a fixed amount. We can say only return Bob twice. So now we're creating an iterator which only has two values. And what we're going to do here is change this to twice so it has a more fitting name. And what you're going to notice is that when we run it, we're going to get Bob back twice. But once we request it a third time, it's going to raise a stop iteration exception because we only had two values in this iterator. Now, something very crazy I learned about the repeat iterator is that it can potentially speed up your for loops. For example, here we have for i in range, or not range, repeat. And what we want to repeat is none 
1 million times. And then obviously inside here, you can put in whatever logic you want, and that would be that. Or in this case, we can just print i to show you that it works. Or to be honest, I was actually expecting the values from the range because I forgot I used repeat. But as you can see here, we printed none 1 million times. We were able to loop through this 1 million times. And this ended up being much faster than both the for loop and the while loop. So what I'm going to do next is show you my benchmark. And to do that, I'm just going to paste all of this in, which means I'm going to require an import, which is the time it import. But what I have here are three functions that all do the same thing. I have a while true loop, which creates a variable called count and then counts 1 million times and then breaks out of this while true loop. Then I have the iter tools repeat version, which is for underscore in repeat 1 million with the repeated value being none, pass. And finally, the for range, which is for underscore in range 1 million, pass. So what I want to show you here mostly is the difference between these two, but I thought, why not just throw in with the while true loop as well, which has a ton of unnecessary operations. So I guess we could expect that to be much slower, but to actually see the difference in performance between these two is going to be quite interesting. And this comment is quite silly. I don't even know why it's there. Anyway, what I did down here is time each one of these functions 100 times. And what it's going to return to us is the accumulative time of each one of these. So how long it took to run this function 100 times. And we're going to compare that to repeat and to range. And at the bottom, I printed the results. And these are the results that I ended up with. I got two and a half seconds for the while true loop, half a second for repeat time, and a little over a second for the range time. So in this benchmark, I found the repeat function or the repeat iterator to be the most optimized approach for looping, which could end up making sense because we don't have to compute what the next value is going to be, such as in a range. Range might have some overhead for generating those numbers. I didn't put that much research into it. I just found it very interesting that the repeat iterator was much faster than the range function. But I just want to put a little disclaimer out there that you should always run your own benchmarks and make sure that this optimization actually works on your computer. Because as time goes on with different Python versions, with different computers, these kinds of optimizations might not even make sense in the near future. So it's very important you consistently check your benchmarks because there are a lot of factors that can come into play when you're trying to optimize your code. But it's still something worth considering because if it does end up saving you half a second and you have to run that function trillions of times, you end up saving a lot of time, which is a major win. If you only run this script once a year, it might end up being a waste of time. And also it's quite traditional just to write it like this because it's much easier to read since that's what we're used to. Anyway, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. I do hope you found this video interesting and please let me know in the comment section down below what you think about these functions and what you thought about that last optimization. I'm not talking about premature optimizations or micro optimizations. Of course, you should avoid both of those, but I just want to hear more about what you thought about the actual optimization. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.